Just prior to birth, high levels of placental corticotropin releasing hormone stimulate the production of more estrogen. As the level of estrogen surpasses that of progesterone, uterine contractions are no longer suppressed. High levels of estrogen cause gap junctions to form in the smooth muscle cells of the myometrium, allowing the muscle cells to work in a coordinated fashion during labor. High levels of estrogen cause an increase of oxytocin receptors within the uterine muscle fibers. Since the oxytocin stimulates myometrial contractions, the increase in oxytocin receptors triggers the uterine muscle fibers to contract. The overall result of increased estrogen and oxytocin is stronger contractions as the time for birth nears. Like other placental hormones, relaxin levels rise during pregnancy. Relaxin helps to dilate the cervix and increases the flexibility of the maternal symphysis pubis. The overall result is to allow expansion of bony pelvis to make more room for the delivering fetus. Labor preceding childbirth is an excellent example of a positive feedback loop that strengthens or intensifies the controlled condition. The stimulus that starts the cycle is contractions of the uterus that moves the baby's head into the cervix. When the baby reaches the cervix, the cervix becomes distended or stretched. Receptor cells detect the stretch and change in the controlled condition of the cervix and send impulse signals to the brain. The impulses received from the nerves in the cervix trigger neurosecretory cells in the hypothalamus to secrete and release the hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin diffuses into the blood capillaries of the pituitary gland and is transported to the uterus. Oxytocin stimulates the smooth muscle tissue of the uterine wall to contract more forcefully. These more forceful contractions push the baby further into the birth canal, stretching the cervix more and triggering the stretch receptors to send more impulses to the hypothalamus. The self-amplifying nature of the positive feedback loop is repeated over and over with increasing intensity until the baby is born. After the birth of the baby, the stretching is halted and the positive feedback loop ceases. The labor process is divided into three stages. During the first stage, the thick cervix thins and opens to a diameter of about 10 centimeters. Amniotic membranes usually rupture during this stage. In the second stage of labor, the fetus descends through the open cervix into the vagina and under the symphysis pubis. The force of the contracting uterine muscles combines with the mother's voluntary pushing efforts to deliver the fetus from the vagina. In the third stage, the placenta is expelled and the uterus contracts upon itself, thereby preventing the mother from hemorrhaging. 